In the name of the living God, who is Creator, Christ and Holy Spirit. Amen. So I want to start with something I've said before. And something that I think is very important. Remember that phrase, I see the love and joy with which God gazes at me as I gaze at God? I want you to say that with me. And then there will be a minute of silence for you to gaze at the Trinity. I see the love and joy with which God gazes at me. As I gaze at God. Amen. So, identity is important. That's something we've said before, too. Especially um, the past several weeks in adult formation, we've been talking about um, Episcopal identity, uh, the Episcopal Church today, and how, how important it is to know exactly who we are as people, who we are as believers, who we are in relationship to others. What are, what are the tags that, 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 that are tacked on to us, onto you. Who, who are you? How would you describe yourself? Identity is important. Um, identity of the God whom we worship is also important. You know, who is this God, this Trinity God, this Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Those are some of the identities that we attach to the God who is a reality and also a mystery and in whom we believe. There's another side to it, however. Identity is one thing that's very important. It gives us those words with which we can talk, discuss. But there's another side to it, and that is relationships. Relationships. And I think those are more important. It's more important to experience relating to somebody else, loving somebody else, respecting somebody else, being in relationships. That's not just knowing who we are, but knowing what are we doing? What's going on between you and me, between among all of us? Relationships are critical. And this is, this is an example. So, today's Trinity Sunday. And in just a few minutes, we will say the Nicene Creed. Um, I believe in God the Father Almighty. That's an identity. Again, it's important. But what about what we just did at the beginning of the sermon? I see the love and joy with which God gazes at me as I gaze at God. Now that's a relationship. And that brings joy to my heart. The question might be, the question might be, so what face did you see when you did that for just a minute or if you were able to get into it? What face of God did you see? I mean, was it the face of Jesus? 
Was it the face of God the Creator? And please don't say that it was an old man with a white beard sitting on a throne. Who knows what the face of God the Creator is? I mean, it could be maybe a mountain. Or maybe, I don't know. I don't want to get heretical here. But what, is, what, is, what, would, what, would, e, what would evolve? What would, what would bubble to the top of being the face of God the Father? Or it could be the face of the Holy Spirit. Maybe wind, fire, who knows? But I bet none of us, at least I'll speak for myself, I didn't, I bet none of us really saw the faces of the Trinity together. You know, we don't talk about that a whole lot. I mean, again, that's identity. Those are tags we put on God. But, but we've got loads of images of Jesus and, again, of other Father and Spirit. But we don't, we don't look at the Trinity as a whole very much. But recently I discovered, I was reading a book and it talked about it, an icon, <clears throat> iconographer's name is um, Andre Rublev. Um, you ought to Google it. That's what I did. It's a fascinating icon. 15th century Russian. And this is what it is. You know, the whole purpose of icons is to look, is, to, is that it would be a way to go into the presence of God, whether whatever is in the icon, especially, especially the eyes. But in this icon, there are three angelic figures around a table. And each one of them represents one of the persons of the Trinity, either the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit. And they are clearly, they're looking at each other. Uh, they're engaged. The, and, in, and in the center, the, they're around a table. And in the center of the table is a chalice representing the Eucharistic meal. Um, but there's nobody on the front of that table. There's nobody, you know, there are three sides or the three persons of the Trinity, but there's nobody sitting in the front of the table. And so the message sort of is there's a place for you to sit at table with the Trinity. And as a matter of fact, there's a theory about this icon because at the very bottom of it, sort of like at the bottom of the table or in the front of the table, there's a place where something is missing. There's a square there. And the theory is that maybe those were relics of, of a saint that had been placed there, or, or maybe it was a mirror. So that as you looked at the icon, right under that empty spot on the table would be your face or the face of one who is gazing at that icon. Fascinating image. Something to talk about. So today is Trinity Sunday, a major feast of the church, when we focus on this truth of our faith. And in the Gospel reading, you heard the Great Commission. That Gospel reading is really the end of the gospel according to Matthew. That's the final stage. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not the ascension. It's not the ascension. But it, is a, it is a resurrection appearance, but it's the final message of Jesus, the resurrected Christ, to the, the, the church of Matthew, Matthew's faith community. And um, this is what he says. It's, it's, it's a very important five lines of scripture. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Jesus is saying, I'm the one. I have been authorized. I have been authorized by God the Father to send you forth. So listen up. He's saying to his followers who have been disi whose disciples and who knew his teaching, knew his preaching, but now Jesus says, I have the authority of heaven and earth. Therefore, Go and make disciples of all nations. Really, he's talking about here all people. Not really nations, but that's a way to talk about all people in the world. Go and make them disciples. Invite them to be followers of Jesus. Invite them to be taught by you folks what I have taught you. And then the third line, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Isn't 
see how things get tied together here. Those are exactly the words we use, we use in our baptismal liturgy. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And probably in this gospel, which was written around circa 80, common era, um, it probably was in fact used for baptisms in that faith community. And therefore Matthew included it right here, baptizing. Not something really that Jesus did, but something that the church did, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. Again, the focus of Matthew was preparing people, teaching them, preparing them to be sent into the world. And remember, and remember, says the risen Christ, I am with you always to the end of the age. Always, always the risen Christ is affirming and encouraging and saying, I am here with you. So there's that baptismal fo formula that includes what we're talking about today. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Trinitarian image of God is one of community. And again, when we think of God, I don't think we think of community or group. We usually think one or the other. But in this message, at the center of our faith, it's really saying, think of us, God says, as community, as a sacred relationship, a God community. Three persons and yet one substance. That's the language that the theologians came up with to try to describe it, to put an identity on it. But we know that the great power is how do we as believers relate and incorporate and experience that mystical and yet very much alive God in whom we believe. So, we have an image through that icon of the Trinity. But it makes, it makes me wonder, I wonder how those three persons of the Trinity related to each other. I mean, it's sort of a funny question. I mean, it's that, you know, God, we're going to talk about God, and yet they're, they're making the statement that the community of God is really important. It's at the center of our faith. So, so how did they relate to each other? And you know, there's not a lot about that in the gospel. There's some things, like when Jesus was facing his death, he certainly said to the Father, can't you take this from me? But he, even in his questioning and a little bit of pushback there, was faithful, was faithful to the end. And as we, as we knew in this window and heard earlier, Jesus related to the Holy Spirit, the risen Christ said, you know what, my time on earth right now is over and I am ascending into the heavens. The time of the Holy Spirit has come upon you at Pentecost Day. And it is a new time and as I recede, focus on the Spirit. So, you know, really a mature relationship, a different time for a different person of the Trinity. But here is that message for us again. How do we, as faithful followers of Jesus Christ, experience the reality of the community of God? I mean, again, I sort of have a, I, I sort of have a hard time saying it because it's so hard to fathom, really. We can get an idea of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit together, but how can we go into that presence? Again, identity is important, but experience is even more important. And I will, I will never forget that I am grandfather to Amelie Charles. And I will, that's, that's, a, that's a piece of my identity. But 
I will also never forget and always hold in my heart the fact that on March the 30th, on March the 30th, 2009, my granddaughter was born at 3 a.m. And at 7 a.m., she was born at home. She was born at home. And at 7 a.m., I was, I was in her home, my son's home, holding that little baby. And, and she was looking at me. I've got a photo to prove this. Now, I know, I know we don't really know what she was seeing, but I, I promise you, her eyes were fixed on me. She was gazing at me, and I was gazing at her. And she was smiling. Again, I don't know really what she was smiling about, but anyway, she was happy. And boy, was I happy too. I mean, that's an experience, physical, emotional, and even spiritual. It's about a relationship that is deep, deep in my heart. And that's the kind of experience that God invites us into. Because as much as Amelie mean, means to me, God is just as important, if not more important. And that's true of maybe all of us. So how do we get to that experience, not just of Jesus, but of all three together? One of the ways is what you're doing right now, coming together as a faith community and bumping up against each other and seeing Christ in the other as the Christ is in you. One of the ways that we can do it is keep asking people, our friends and our fellow journeyers in faith, um, how are you seeing and experiencing the Trinity? How can it not just be a name, but a reality of our religious and spiritual experience? That's worth thinking about. That's worth praying about. So let's sit in silence with the Holy Trinity in whom we believe. Amen.